And I want to give God praise for all of His blessings today and thank Him uh, just for being so good to us. And we just bless His wonderful, wonderful name. I'm going to ask our ushers to come forward uh, this morning as we give our tithes and offerings. And while they're coming, uh, just uh, by way of a few announcements, uh, we're having the uh, Foothills Tent Crusade, uh, which is going on right now at the Caldwell County Fairgrounds Monday through Friday night at 7 o'clock. Uh, if you'd like to sing in the choir, uh, the choir practice starts uh, about 6.15 every night. Uh, and if you are handicapped, senior adult, uh, either way, uh, they can let you drive right up to the tent so uh, you can uh, have easy access, don't have to walk far. So please uh, remember that. Uh, we want to encourage uh, everybody to be here. This is our, uh, as Poobie's Chapel, we make this our revival. We're coming together praying, trusting God. How many of you know God can do great things? Would you say amen? Amen. Amen. And I praise Him and just honor His name today uh, that He's able to do all things. So please uh, remember that in prayer. Also, uh, out, out on the uh, Resource Center, uh, it's praying for our ch children during the school year. Uh, if you'd like for your child to be prayed for uh, by someone all year long as they go to school, please fill that out. Uh, that is due back by the last Sunday of this month, August the 26th. So please uh, remember that and ask the Lord's blessing upon all of our, our children, our students as they go to school, and also... Uh, to the uh, staff uh, as they uh, as they care for them, the teachers and all. Uh, let's pray for them that God will bless them and lift them up uh, and just give God thanksgiving this morning uh, for all that God is doing. Uh, I want to tell you, we serve a God who is able. Amen. How many of you believe this morning that God is able? Amen. And I praise Him uh, for His ability and what God wants to do. We praise Him for it. Uh, give Him thanksgiving and give God praise. Uh, I do want to uh, mention there will be a, a wedding shower uh, today at 5.30 uh, over in the administrative building. Uh, we're going to celebrate uh, uh, Brooke Dula and Tyler Stewart, uh, who only have uh, just a few more weeks until uh, until their wedding. So uh, please remember uh, them in prayer and ask the Lord's blessing on them. So please remember that. Uh, and then also, uh, as we pray this morning, uh, let's do remember... Uh, uh, Sonny Anderson's uh, family. His sister passed away. Uh, so please remember uh, both Sonny and his uh, family in prayer. And also remember Beth Clark. Uh, her sister passed away also. So please remember uh, them in prayer. Uh, that God will bless them and encourage them. And that uh, funeral is tomorrow. Uh, so uh, please remember that at 11 o'clock. So pray for them that God will uh, God will bless uh, and just uh, move in a special way. I'm glad this morning we serve a God who's able. Amen. And uh, give God thanksgiving for His blessings. Thank Him uh, for His grace this morning, His love, uh, and the power of His Word. And this time we're going to ask our ushers uh, to lead us in the Lord in prayer as we pray uh, for this service, pray for our churches in our community, uh, that God will bless them in, in this county and then around the world this morning as people meet together, that there will be a true spiritual awakening. Uh, they will hear the voice of God and allow God just to speak to us and give Him thanksgiving for all of His blessings this morning. And uh, also you can give online at poobieschapel.org or through our app, our Poobies Chapel Baptist Church app. Uh, so uh, thank God for all those opportunities God gives us to be part of His plan. And we want to give Him praise and thanksgiving this morning. So this time we're going to ask our ushers uh, to lead us to the Lord in prayer at this time. Amen. Let's pray together. Lord, just thank you for letting us be here today. Lord, just give me a desire to be in your house, Lord. I just want to be with the uh, Clark and the Anderson families, Lord, this week as they've, um, they've lost loved ones in their, in their family, Lord. I just ask you to... to, to just give, them, uh, just give them the comfort, Lord, that they need, Lord. Just help us as a church to be there for these families, Lord. And just thank you for all the families that were touched here yesterday through our church, Lord, all the kids that were touched, Lord. And not just in our church, Lord, all the churches across this country, Lord, has reached out and, uh, and, and helping the people in their communities, Lord. I just thank you. Uh, just thank you for their willingness to work, Lord, for you. Lord, just ask you to be with our offering, Lord, and I just ask you to bless it, Lord. Just thank you. Uh, for the way you've took care of every need that we've ever had here at our church. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. And praise the Lord. Thank you so much for yesterday. Uh, what a blessing it was to be able to uh, uh, to be here with uh, so many uh, different families. We had over 500 people come yesterday uh, for our back-to-school blessing. So thank you all uh, that were helpers in that and being part of that. Uh, it was very eye-opening. Uh, we have a lot of need that is going on right here, right where we are. And uh, we need to pray as a church how God would help us uh, to reach into that need and to speak to people's lives. That they can come to know the Lord and uh, and be uh, be delivered. I want to tell you what I serve a deliverer, Amen. And uh, He's able. This morning I want to ask you a question: Are you saved? Amen. Do you know the Lord? Amen. 
Amen. He said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let's stand together and let's sing for the glory of the Lord. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene. I'm glad He is in control and He has all power. Amen. Let's worship Him this morning. Stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene And wonder how he could love me A sinner condemned unclean How marvelous, how wonderful And my soul shall this morning. Y'all may be seated. Pray for the choir as we sing this morning. We're going to sing How Sweet Are the Promises. How Sweet Are the Promises and then we'll do All My Hope. How Sweet Are the Promises and All My Hope. Now let's pray the Spirit of God.
breaks him down to his knees. Got out and broke him home in a time or two. Yes, Lord. And he picked me up and showed me what it means to be a man. Come on and sing. by the blood this morning. Stand together and fellowship with the choir as they come down. Amen. Yes, children, search in the foyer, please. Ages uh, 2 to 6. may be seated at this time. We'll have Anna and April and uh, Abby to sing for us. Y'all pray for them as they sing, please.
blessings we pray for peace comfort for family protection while we sleep we pray for healing prosperity we pray for your mighty hand to ease our suffering too much to give us lesser things cause what if your blessings come through raindrops what if your healing comes through tears what if a thousand sleepless nights are what it takes to know you're near and what if trials of this life are your mercies in disguise tells you to sing a song, you sing it. Um, and this next song uh, is He Has. Um, and the first few words says, I've not always been faithful, but He has. I've not always been true, but He has. And, and I just thank God for being the He has. No matter no matter what I've faced, He has always been there. And I, th I thank you for that. Oh, 
Amen. How many of you are glad this morning that God's always faithful? Amen. I want to praise Him and honor Him this morning. Uh, He is a faithful God that knows exactly where we are and what we need today, and we just want to praise Him. Uh, Give Him glory this morning. Thank Him for being so good. Uh, Just praise His name for His blessings. Thank you so much uh, for the wonderful songs of encouragement, uh, the songs that uh, uh, move our heart to worship and honor the Lord this morning. We want to give Him thanksgiving. I want to invite you to take your Bibles and turn with me, uh, if you will, to the book of Acts chapter number 10. Uh, this morning, Acts chapter number 10, as God is just uh, uh, speaking to us through the book of Acts, uh, I praise His wonderful uh, name for His Word that God gives us. Uh, I have been, uh, and I do often, uh, listen to uh, uh, other uh, preachers and messages, and because I want to tell you what, you can never get too much of the Word, amen? Uh, and I've been amazed over these last little while, over the last couple of weeks, how many uh, how many pastors are preaching uh, the book of Acts. Acts. Uh, it's kind of like God is saying, hey, it's time to get back to the basics of what works and where we need to be, and that is letting the Holy Spirit of God breathe on us and lead us and guide us because we need His power, we need His presence, because we have His promises. Would you say amen right there? Amen? And uh, would y'all believe that? Do you believe this morning that you hold the Word of God in your hand? The Bible lets us know how God gave us His Word, and then through the Word, God has filled it with the promises for you and I uh, so that we can walk with Him in the Word, walk every day, just like the song I just said, that those times when you have no idea where you're going, remember, He has, He does, amen? And uh, we serve a God who is always faithful, and I praise Him uh, this morning for the Word of God. I want to ask you, uh, before we go any further, let's go to the Lord in prayer uh, this morning. Uh, this ask the Lord's will to be done. I know we have some people that are out uh, to this morning downstairs canceling with someone, so please pray for them uh, that God will just work in their heart also. Because guess what? This is the place you should come to get help. God can help you. Amen? Uh, and uh, we want to pray for them. Let's pray together. Father, thank you uh, this morning, God, for the privilege you give us, God, in America, to come together to worship you. Father, thank you for the desire you give us this morning just to come into your house and ask you, God, just to speak to us. Thank you, Father, for the privilege you give us to have a copy of the Word of God. Lord, your Word is a lamp under our feet and a light under our path. And God, I thank you that through the Word of God this morning, we have the promise to be able to see who you are, how God that you want to lead us and guide us, Lord, you want to speak to us. And Lord, we are here this morning to ask you to open our ears up to the Word of God. Open our hearts to receive by faith what you want to say to us this morning. Father, I want to pray, God, for this, uh, this uh, dear lady right now, Father, that they're speaking to you and encourage her. Uh, Lord, whatever physical, spiritual uh, need is, Lord, that you would just surround her right now, God, with grace and with mercy, Lord, and give the healing and the strength that she needs, Lord. I know that you are a God who is always faithful. And Lord, you call us to you. Oh, Lord, as our shepherd, you call us to you. How God is the one who's able to do all things. Father, we want to believe how with her right now. And Father, we pray, God, for our churches, through our community, through this county, how Lord, around this country this morning, our missionaries. Father, we pray for an outpouring of the power and the presence of God upon your people one more time, that there will be a true spiritual awakening, just like happened in the book of Acts, just like has happened in the history, Father. God, we know that you are able, and Lord, this morning, we are believing you, how God, to work in and through us for your glory. God, thank you for the Word of God tonight. Thank you for speaking to our heart and help us to receive your Word. In Jesus' wonderful and holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you know God answers prayer? Amen. I want to praise Him this morning uh, that He does hear and answer prayer. And when you look at the book of Acts, the book of Acts is an answer to prayer. When you go back with me to Acts chapter number 1, uh, the disciples began to pray. They met in upper room, and Jesus said, I want you to go until you be endued. I want you to pray until you are endued with power from on high. And so you watch these disciples as they go to the upper room, how they spend time with God praying. I want to let you know something. Time spent with God is time well spent. Amen? How many of you believe this morning in those places where you have spent with God praying and trusting Him are some of the greatest times you have in your life? Amen? That place where you uh, where you allow God to know your heart and you begin to know the heart of God. And so everything that happens in the book of Acts happened from that place uh, where they begin to pray. And so you watch Jesus as He calls 
of these disciples to follow him all the way back in the Gospels. He was leading them to lead. He was teaching them to be a disciple. He was giving them the word so that through that same word they can lead others. And you're watching that take place in the book of Acts. You watch them, these same misfits. Every one of these disciples had problems. I want to ask you something. Look at your neighbor and say, do you have problems? That might get deep, amen? Don't look at them and say, you have a problem. Just ask them if they've got one. When you look at what is going on in the, in the disciples' lives, these disciples, have, some of them were crooks. Some of them, you look at their life, how they, were, they were fighters. I mean, you watch all these different things that are taking place, and Jesus saves them. I know that this morning, there's a place in your life you can go back to that Jesus saved you. Would you say amen? When you think about that place, that is where these disciples are. They hook up with Jesus. Jesus saves them. And then they begin on that three and a half year journey of walking with the Savior every day until He goes to the cross and then He resurrects from the dead. After His resurrection, He spends that time with them. And so now we are watching what happens after that time. That place where they begin to walk in the power of the Gospel. Not just walking with the Savior, but now they are trained transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit in their own life. That word transformed, it means to be changed, to be to change nature or form or character. It simply means to be changed. When you look at what God calls us to, God calls us to a life that is different. How many of you, when you got saved, your life changed? Would you say Amen. And so you watch that take place. And then you get over the book of Romans where Paul is preaching to the church at Rome and he has given them the word to the Gentiles and he begins to tell them. In Romans chapter number 12, he said, look, I want, I want you to know you are to be a living sacrifice. Simply say, give what you have and who you are and everything about your life to Jesus and begin to follow Him. And then he said, be not conformed to this world. That word conformed means to fashion to it. It is like to blend into the world. Can I just tell you something today? Satan will make it easy for you to blend into the world. He said, be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed. That word transformed means that there's that change that takes place. He said, do it by the word, walking with Jesus every day. And so you're watching as these disciples here in chapter number 10, how you're seeing these devout men and watching their lives change right as we flip how from verse to verse, from word to word, God is transforming their life. I want to tell you, I want to ask you something this morning. And this is just for all of us. Is Christianity a convenience or a commitment? You are watching these devout men. We see one by the name of Cornelius that we read about. He became devout. He was praying where you should pray. He was trying to do what you should do. And God speaks to him and says, hey, here's what you have got to do. And then, how you watch Peter, he is a devout man that God speaks to in a vision that we looked at last Sunday, that place where God gives him a heart for what is about to happen in his life. And so Peter, he is devout, and Peter is one of these in, Acts, in the book of Acts. He's seen miracles take place. Have you ever seen a miracle take place? He's watched miracles happen. How, how many of you uh, the other night at the tent saw the miracle take place? And so you watch, uh, those, uh, if, in that great storm that we had, I don't remember which evening it was, maybe Wednesday, Wednesday evening, that great storm, it was completely covered the tent and God just put an eye all the way around it. I said, hey, you know what, my God is able, amen. Y'all do know that God is the weatherman, right? When I was growing up, it was Cloudy McLean. But all he was doing was, God is still in control, friend. I want to let you know, wherever you are, whatever's going on in your life, God is in control. Peter was one that in his life, he, he hasn't realized how big God is. Has Peter seen miracles? Has Peter, did Peter see Jesus after he rose from the dead? Did Peter talk to Jesus after he rose from the dead? Wow, did Peter preach and 3,000 people get saved? 
Then Peter preached again and 5,000 get saved. You watch. Peter, he goes to the temple in chapter number 3. And this man, he said, I want you to rise up. And he, and he stands up on his feet and he begins to leap and praise God. So he's watched, someone, he's watched somebody that was dead come alive. Peter has seen all of these things. Yet he did not realize how big God is. Can I tell you what happens in our journey sometimes? Y'all want to know? We go through life and we forget how big God is. While Peter, he has seen all these things take place. He has watched all of this happen as those have, miracles have taken place. And he has seen, yes, this happened. Yes, this happened. It's kind of like the children of Israel sometimes as they are going in that place in Egypt. God delivers them. God sets them free. God splits of the Red Sea. They walk over on dry land. But as they are going through that land, they don't realize how big the God that just delivered them really is. Peter is in the same Boat. Wow, God has done all this in Peter's life, yet a Peter, God sends him a vision so that he can realize how big God is. Peter has a vision from God, and he goes to meet this man by the name of Cornelius. So Peter has come. How when we come to the verse of Scripture, how that we're going to look at this morning, Peter has come to that place in verse number 34. And Cornelius, we heard him say, Peter, you are here and we are sitting in front of you. We want to hear what God has done. We want to hear about this Savior that you are talking about. Look in verse number 34 with me, if you will. The Bible says in verse number 34, it says, Then Peter did what? Opened his mouth. Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is what? No respecter of persons. Wow. Hey, unhook my clicker thing and hook it back in. There we go. When you think about what is going on in Peter's life, Peter is at the place how will you watch him give his life. Peter has left everything. He is going out to help people to know how that there is a Savior who is able to save them. That's able to work in their life. And you watch Peter. How Peter has this vision as he goes. How the world, the whole entire world can be transformed. Those who are right in front of him. He is going to a Gentile's house. Can I just let you in on something? God is no respecter of what? Persons, just like he said. Peter, they have had the mindset to know, hey, yes, God is the God of the Jews. Hey, yes, God is able to deliver us. Hey, yes, Jesus is that Savior of the Jews. And God is opening their eyes that He is the Savior of the world. And so what does Peter do with what God has given him? Number one, he gives the Word. How they understand that this is a Word from God. And that this Word that has come, as Peter has opened his mouth... Uh, to teach them the Word. God is giving them uh, the Word of God through Peter. Peter's eyes have been opened. Peter's heart has been opened. Peter has received from God a Word uh, that only God can give him, the power of God for everyone that Peter saw. Peter says, hey, I see what happened. I understand what happened. God opened uh, the Word so he could know. Oh, well, Peter saw that everyone uh, needs Jesus and that Jesus is the Savior of the whole world. I want to ask you something this morning. Can everybody hear me in here? How long has it been since we've seen those who are around us that they need a Savior? Sometimes we just wish, well, boy, I wish they'd straighten their life up. Or I wish they would trust the Lord. I wish they'd turn over a new leaf. Can I let you in on something? You and I are part of that leaf. We are a part of that change. It's that place where God burdens our heart. And so you watch Peter. I want to tell you why Peter is doing what he is doing. Because he has the burden in his heart. He's got the drive by the Holy Spirit. And the power of the gospel that is in him. How we see God affects how we share Him. Now think about what Peter did and think about Peter's life. He was a devout man. I want to tell you what devout men do. Uh, those who are hungry, those who are thirsty, those who have that burden, they want to share it with others. And so you watch Peter. He said, I don't have anything else to give you but the Word. And I'm going to give you the Word of God. 
How many, how many times today in our world are people, and how many people do we see that are searching for something in their life? They may be doing it through all kind of avenues. And I could stand up here this morning and name them. They could be doing it by drugs. They could be doing it by relationships. They can be doing it by adultery, by, by, by separation. All these other things you can think of where people begin to search in their lives. But I want to tell you what will fix every single bit of it. That is the Word of God, the work of the Holy Spirit, and the witness of the people of God. Oh, when you look at our world today, yes, it is falling. Yes, it is crumbling. Yes, there's, there's people around us who are hurting. And friend, if you were here yesterday, you watched. You can see the hurt in people's eyes. That deliverance is what they need in their life. Oh, but there's a truth from the Word that has been perceived. And that truth is this. He said, I want, I want you to know that God is no respecter of persons. Our world today cries out that everybody ought to be one. Amen? Every, when I was growing up, every, I remember this. Y'all ready? This is going to be something that's going to astound everybody in here. Every beauty pageant that used to come on TV, I don't know if they still come on or not, but we didn't have but three channels and you had to watch something. Y'all remember them days? Every one of them would go up to the microphone. What would you like to see happen? World peace. Everybody be the same. Y'all remember those days? Can I let you know something? Peter has just had a revelation from God. That revelation is that no matter who you are, no matter what color your skin is, no matter what background you have, no matter what kind of culture you have lived in, no matter what ethnicity you are, no matter what is going on in your life, that you are my target and you need Jesus. Church, I want to tell you this morning, oh, the greatest burden you and I can ever have is to receive the truth of God's Word, that God is not a respecter of persons, and it's not just those who are around us, but it's everybody who needs Jesus. You say, why? Pastor, why do you, why, why do we send money around the world to support missions? Because everybody needs Jesus. Why do we try to witness to everybody that we can? Because everybody needs Jesus. And Peter has just had a revelation in his life that whosoever is the one that needs to come to God. I want to ask you something this morning. I'm not really sure I'm going to preach. I want to ask you, how long has it been since there's been a word in your heart to give somebody else a word? It's real easy. I'm talking, to, I'm talking to Christian people right now. It's real easy to see every single thing else and miss what we're supposed to be doing. Amen. Y'all understand that, don't you? Amen. Man, the children of Israel, they didn't have this perception. Did God show it to them? Absolutely. God gave it to Moses. God said, lead them out. And all those that want to come with you, there were some that were believing. So you've seen that happen. They understood. God's a God of everybody. But you watch as that burden lifts, as they continue to realize, hey, man, I don't know about this. I don't know about that. I, instead of saying, God, where are we going? What are we doing? And you watch as Peter, he says, I want you to know I have received the truth. And the truth is that God is no respecter of persons. And then you say, yeah, but we don't know how bad, you don't know how bad that person has, has done or what they have done to me or all these things. I want to tell you, God is not a respecter of persons and God is the deliverer of whosoever has will come to He, I'm God, loves the whole world. And that includes everyone. Amen? And so you watch Peter as he receives all that word. Jesus never discriminated against anyone. God, He always, always received them, gave them the truth, and the truth was up to them how they received Jesus. 
We're to give them the Word. Amen? So Peter gives them the Word of God. Here's what he says in Job 34 and verse number 18. All are the work of His hands. He says it like this in Romans 10 and verse number 12. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon His name. Peter's heart is this. His Peter's heart has excelled with the excitement that Jesus' salvation is for everyone. I love what he says in verse number 35. Look at it. But in every nation he that feareth him worketh righteousness is accepted with him. And how many nations? All nations, as he says in verse, in every single nation, every nation. God is the God of all nations. Back up with me for just a second to Acts chapter number 2 in your mind in verse number 5 where the Bible says on the day of Pentecost that every nation is represented there. Wow. Our call today as a believer is to share the Word with everyone. It's to understand oh, that He is the Anointed One, that He is the Savior, and that the cross is for everybody. As you look in verse number 36, look at it with me. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, uh, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. Listen to this. He is Lord of who? He's Lord of all. Oh, listen, he said, this is Him. He is the Anointed One that has brought of the Word. And he goes on through these verses of Scripture to let you know that peace only comes by Him. How many of you remember the day you trusted the Lord? You remember the peace that God gave you? The Bible says it like this. It's a peace that passes all understanding, keeping our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. It's that peace oh, that we have. It's that place of acceptance oh, with God. He said, for everyone that feareth and that, that worketh. Oh, that place that worketh means oh, that fear is believing as we looked at oh, back oh, in, this, in this chapter already. A oh, place of that walking is the work. It is stepping into who God is in our life. That word accepted means that He's been approved. Listen, God wants to approve your life today. Amen? You say, Preacher, you have no idea how sinful I've been. Can I let you know something? You have no idea how strong my Savior is. You say, yeah, but you don't know how far down I've been and what I've done and the bitterness I have in my life. Friend, it does not matter what you have. It is who can accept you. And God says, if you'll come to Him, I will accept you. Oh, it's that place of His salvation in our life. It's that place of knowing. Oh, and so Peter, he said, look, I want to share with you the Word. And he did in verse number 37. He did it in verse number 38. He said, this is who that He is. Look at verse number 37 with me. He said, that, that Word. Church, I want to tell you something. I want to remind you about something this morning. We have nothing else but the Word. If we are not sharing, preaching the Word, people are not going to trust in Jesus. The Bible says that the faith come by hearing. Hearing by what? The Word of God. And so Peter says, it's that Word that I'm sharing, the Word, that Word I say, you know, which was published, published throughout all Judah and beginning from Galilee. After the baptism which John preached, he said, it is that Word that is given. John says it like this, John chapter 1 and verse number 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and with God, and the Word was God. He said, I am sharing that One who's able to do all things. This morning, do we really believe that Jesus is who He says He is? That He is all in all. Peter said, I want you to know Cornelius. I want you to know all these people in Cornelius' house. Jesus is who He says He is. Jesus is able to do all things. Jesus has you in His hand. Jesus has your future in His hand. Jesus loves you right where you are. Jesus wants to give you life right where you are. And so you watch Peter as he expels them in verse number 38. How God anointed Jesus that He is the one, that He is the Savior. He anointed Him with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing good. Do you believe Jesus did good? And then it said, and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. All those that Satan had took captive. I want to tell you something this morning. There's many this morning in our families, our friends, those around us, our neighbors, that are being held in oppression by Satan. What if this morning... 
You know, someone was being held unjustly, and you had the key to let them out. And there's no one else around them that can rescue them. You are the key. What would you do with the key? Judy would let them out. And we'd take the church van and pick them up, amen? Can I let you in on something? When you look at the Word of God, He said Jesus is the one who can deliver. He can heal. He can bring a life to those who are oppressed, to those who are wrapped in chains and in bondage by the devil himself. It is Jesus that can deliver them. And I want to remind you, church, He is that big that no matter where someone is, He is able. Oh, and you watch in verse number 38 as he says, Those who are oppressed, which means uh, to exercise a dominion against them, to put them in bounds, Jesus can set them free. I want to remind you, he's the deliverer. You know what Peter did? Peter went to Cornelius' house uh, with the burden to share the word, uh, to let them know uh, that Jesus is able uh, to heal. He is able to set them free. He is that one that is able. I want to tell you, when you think about the Word of God, here's the witness from God. Because in verse number 39 down to verse number 43, Peter begins to tell us. He begins to say, this is how it happened. Can I let you in on something? You might be able to tell somebody. I went to Sunday school. And how many of you know where to be in Sunday school? Amen. Amen. And the other 12 said, hey, I want to let you know. Or to be in Sunday school. It's a place you learn. But and you can say in Sunday school I learned that Jesus died on the cross. That Jesus died for the sins of the whole world. In Sunday school, I learned how that he would, that they buried his body. I learned in Sunday school that on the third day he arose and Jesus lives and he, 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 can, he can deliver you. You can tell that what you have learned, but there's something different when you have witnessed it. You can tell all about, well, you know something, you ought to go to church. I, I do believe everybody in the world should go to church. Do y'all believe that? I believe everybody ought to go worship, amen? Because guess what? God is that holy, amen? And we're to worship Him. We're to honor Him. We're to reverence Him. But I'll tell you, you can go to church and never have the witness Peter said, I want to tell you what we are. We are the witness of what has happened. Look what he says there in verse number 39. And we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly. And then it says in verse 41, not to all people, but unto witnesses chosen of God, even to us. Us, who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be judged, the judge of quick and dead. He said to him, I give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of what? Sins. Oh, Peter said, look, I don't really know what I ought to tell y'all. I don't really know a whole lot about your traditions. I don't know a whole lot about your culture other than uh, the things that y- y- we have done. Uh, that We've been in bondage to it and we've paid taxes to it. And all these things that have come uh, from your culture. He said, but I, I do know this, Cornelius. Here is what you need to know. And that is that Jesus is the Savior. I am an eyewitness. I walked with Him. I heard Him. I know He resurrected. I ate with Him. He taught me. I am walking with Him every single day. Can I ask you something today? Do you have a witness in your life that you know Jesus? I'm not talking about going to church. I'm not talking about getting baptized. I'm not talking... All those things are good. I'm not talking about doing good works. I want to know in your life, do you have the witness that there's a place in your life? And you said, Jesus, I, I need you. I need you to forgive me and come into my life and save me. Lord, forgive me of all of my sins. That place that there's a witness... That there's an eyewitness in your life that your life changed.
And then he says he chose out those and he began to disciple us. He spent time with us for 40 days. Jesus took his disciples aside and he began to teach them and lead them and so that they could hear who that he is and know that he is the Savior. And he says, I love this, what he said in the Scripture. And he said, it is him. It is him. Can I let you know something today? It is him. It is Him today in 2018. It is Him that is able to change lives. It is Him that is able to cure hearts. It is Him that is able to rescue those that do not know Christ as Savior and Lord of our life. It is Him. It's Him, friend. It's Him. He's still the answer. Peter said, I want you to know I am a witness of Him. That word preach means to proclaim. That word that He used, testify, it is a witness. It is that place that I bear record. He said, I bear record in verse number 42 that it is Him. In verse number 43, He said, He fulfilled all the words of the prophet so that whosoever will trust in Him will be saved. Oh, friend, when you look, I love verse number, verse number 43 where He said at the very end of that, whosoever believeth in Him shall receive remission of sins. That means a payment for every sin. That word remission means to be redeemed or to be free from that sin. It means to be pardoned. It means to have liberty. The word sin means to miss the mark and offend God. So many times it's easy for us to get caught up on guilt. I want to ask a question here this morning. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, have you ever been guilty of anything? And then say, ask them right after that, say, did you pay your tithes today? No, don't do that. <laughs> Have you ever been guilty in your life of anything? Guilt wraps our heart. Guilt causes that cloudiness in our life. And sometimes in guilt, because we feel guilty of something, it's a place where we feel like, hey, I just need to get that off me. A lot of people who think they got saved were trying to get guilt off of them. Rather than realizing I have sinned against God and that's not just what I got caught for or what I feel condemned for, but I have sinned against God and therefore with God I have got to ask God to forgive me and I am a sinner and created me a brand new heart. That place with the Holy Spirit. Here's what the Holy Spirit does in our life. How the Bible says before we're saved, He lets you know when you understand that you need Christ as Savior and Lord, that we are a sinner before God. The Bible says it like this in the book of, in the Gospel of John, that the Holy Spirit has come to teach us, to turn us uh, to Jesus and show us who Jesus is. Well, before I got saved, did I feel guilty when I sinned? Absolutely. But I want to tell you, when the conviction came in my life of knowing Jesus as Savior and Lord in my life personally, that place where I began to realize I was a sinner, I, I didn't worry about the sins I had committed at that time. I was worried about I was going to hell because I am a sinner and there's a Savior and the Holy Spirit said, You need Jesus. And that is the place where you and I understand. After that, I want to tell you, there's some confession of sin before God and asking His forgiveness in our life. But He said, I am a witness that Jesus can take away every sin you have ever had. And the guilt you had, and the loss that you had, every single bit of that is taken away in the liberty that Jesus gives you when you get saved. He'll cleanse your life. Amen. Paul, you watch as Jesus changes lives. I want to give you these last two things that happen in this chapter. It's amazing to me what takes place, and it amazed Peter. The Bible says in verse number 44 and 45, here's what happens. While Peter yet spake these words. Can I let you in on something today? So many times as Christians... We do have faith. How many of you have faith? Amen. But we sit back and we're like, okay, faith's going to work. I'm going to trust Him. I, I, Lord, I'm trusting You to save this person. Amen. How many of you trust in the Lord to save somebody? Amen. Would you say, I am? Hey, we're trusting God to work in people's lives. But Peter could have sit in Cornelius' house and thought, I'm going to pray for Cornelius right here. 
I'm just going to sit here and pray for Cornelius. Could Cornelius got saved? The Bible says faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. What did Peter do? He spake the Word. Sometimes as a church, we sit inside and we pray, and Lord, save our neighborhood, save my son, my daughter, Lord, save, save all, bring them into church. Amen? Amen? And we should. That's a prayer we should have. Amen? Amen. But when are we going to speak the Word to them? The Bible says in verse number 44, how when Peter spoke the Word, God blew on the Word. The Holy Ghost, the Bible says, came upon them in verse number 44. And the Holy Ghost fell on them which heard the Word. He empowered the Word of God. Here's what the Bible says about the Word. The Bible says that the letter of the law killeth. When you look at the Ten Commandments, which we have in our church, back here on the back wall, when you, have, when you look at the Ten Commandments, they say, Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not have other gods before me. You, you look at the Ten Commandments, uh, God says, Hey, I want you to know you are guilty. You know about sin. You know where you are. So the letter of the law says, Wow, you're guilty. You will stand in judgment. But he says, the Spirit bringeth life. It's the Holy Spirit that breathes on that Word when we understand, thou, thou shalt have no other gods before me. And God says, yes, you are guilty of that. And you need to trust me and understand that I am your God. And I can trust you. I, I can save you and forgive you of your sin. I can forgive you of who uh, you are in your sinful nature and give you a brand new life. It takes the wind of the Holy Spirit. Friend, I want to tell you today, we are living in a time... When people want a feel-good religion, and as long as it's convenient and feels good, it's okay. But if it don't feel good, and those times whenever it's just like, ah, no, I'm just going to hang out somewhere else. And you change direction with the wind. I'll let you know something about the wind of the Holy Spirit. He's eternal. And the Holy Spirit comes in you. He is an eternal. And He says that He came upon them. The Word was spoken, which produces the faith. And faith in Christ and what Christ can do. Have the power of the Holy Spirit is the one who comes. He comes in us when we trust Him as Savior and Lord. And so you understand from verse number 44, how the wind or the breath of God came upon them. And the Bible says the Holy Spirit, He's the one who convicts us to believe and dwells us. And then it says in verse number 45, everybody with Peter. So you got Peter. Peter has brought some disciples with him. And they're there at the house of Cornelius. They hear the Word. They see the Holy Spirit move upon them. And as the Holy Spirit moves upon them, they are all astonished that, wow, the Holy Spirit, that God loves Gentiles. Would you look at somebody and say, God loves Gentiles? God loves Jews. God loves me and yous. Would somebody write that down? God loves us. Oh, listen, when you think about the Holy Spirit, He comes into our life to show us who Jesus is and the forgiveness and the power of our sin and how Satan may have us bound, but He can set us free. So the breath of God breathed upon them. They were astonished. They said, we want to walk in the way. The Bible says in verse number 46 that they spake uh, with tongues. And you, you understand that in verse number 46. And they heard them speak with tongues and they magnified God. Then answered Peter. Peter said, wow, look what has happened. These who did not believe, now they have believed. And their life has totally changed. You say, how you they spake with tongues? Absolutely. Just like they did in Acts chapter number 2. How that all men heard in their own language. And you watch how Peter, as he's astonished at the hand of God. His uh, a language is specifically uh, one naturally unacquired. You watch uh, as they speak. And then the Bible says that with that tongue they glorified God. Wow. There's a whole lot of things that go on in this world today in the name of religion. But if it is not glorifying God, and it is not praising God, and it is not lining up with the Word of God, it is not from God. And he said, look, I want you to see what is taking place. And they stand astonished. And you know what the very first thing Peter did? He said, boys, y'all need to be baptized. 
It's time to publicly confess who you are and publicly confess what Jesus has done in your life. Just like us, we're going to have a baptism class in here next Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. If you have been saved and not been baptized, listen, be in here at 10 o'clock next Sunday morning. We're going to teach what baptism is, what it means, and that it's a celebration that Jesus has saved us forever. Wow, it's an open confession. So when you think about the way, it's a place where God calls us to follow on. Confessing who He is in our lives. Let's pray together. Father, thank You for the Word. Thank You for the witness of the Holy Spirit. God, thank You, Father, that You know exactly...